officially Pepper's Place got started in October of this past year, October 2014. But we've had animals since um, probably six years. We started out with backyard chickens at a different location and then we moved here to Northampton three and a half years ago and we transported our chickens with us. Um, and we've, so we've cared for animals for a long time. We got the idea of a sanctuary when we first started to explore the idea of becoming vegan and um, uh, which is a, basically a plant-based diet and we read some books and then we started visiting sanctuaries. We started learning about issues around animals and the industrial agriculture. We were so fired up that we thought we wanted to do something. And since we had cared for animals already, we just kind of gradually added more animals and it became a reality. Um, and we have a lot of support of the local sanctuaries as well as some of the regional ones and um, to help us make this happen. Cayenne is a, one of uh, seven chickens that are named after spices. And so we have other paprika and cinnamon and nutmeg and we'll show you those in a minute. But she is super social and she would rather be up in our kitchen living with us if she could. We started to learn about the backyard chicken industry and some of the cruel practices that happen where they kill the roosters. And uh, and also the demand for eggs, They it, it's harsh on their bodies. So as they get older, we feed the eggs back to them to give them the calcium and the protein they need. So they don't. there's no expectation of how many eggs they're gonna produce. We just, if they have eggs, we give them back to them and sometimes we'll give them away if people need eggs. But um, for the most part, um, it's just about li them living the rest of their life, you know, in a safe space. Pepper himself, who was our mascot, came from a situation where he was doing animal therapy with kids who were um, victims of the school shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut. The psychologist, her name is Stacia Barnison, um, could no longer care for Pepper because she has health problems. And so we adopted him in October and gave the nonprofit the namesake. And um, he has a mate as well. And she came from a rescue situation and um, came along with him. Some of the other animals came from rescue situations. One came from a co-housing facility, some of um, three of them chickens came from a co-housing facility where they were going to be slaughtered and someone from the facility wanted to rescue them and so they called us. Um, these, the birds, the parrots came from rescue situations where they experienced neglect. Um, most of them come from some sort of bad background where they're a rescue situation. Gotcha! This is Rio and he came from a situation where he was uh, uh, with too many other birds and the family wasn't caring for him properly. So there was a neglect, he wasn't being fed right and cared for. He was rescued and the foster mom ended up teaching him some better words to speak and feeding him properly. And then we adopted him shortly after that and he's been with us since December. He is from, uh, he's a red fronted macaw and he's from Bolivia, that's where his species is from. Um, he actually was bred, but um, they are endangered in Bolivia and uh, because of habitat loss and because of wild capture of birds. So he kind of represents a species that's uh, on the decline, and we're glad to have him. This is Maxine, and she came to us just a few months ago, and she is a blue-fronted Amazon. We call her Sunny Face because of her yellow face. And she came from a situation where she was in a basement for 18 years in the dark and the rescue organization near Northeast Avian Rescue had to foster her to get used to natural light. As a result, she has stunted growth, which she'll never be able to completely recover from. She's in really great health and she's super sweet. And we're hoping that her language will develop like it should be, but the neglect because of that, um, she doesn't have as much language as she should. Well, Pepper himself was probably the one that has the most experience helping children with trauma. Stacia did uh, animal therapy where she talked about, used the kind of the body language of the animals and related it to the children and their needs. And so if an animal is scared, Pepper himself, uh, rabbits get scared very easily, um, then what are they, how are they showing that they're scared? What do they need to communicate and how are they communicating? And so she would use that as a parallel with the animals. And the same with healing. What do they need for love? And you know, to heal, they need love, and they need compassion, they need gentleness, 
And so she would relate all those things. And so we carry on that same mentality whenever we have visitors, uh, whether they're children or adults, um, come. And I also do outreach with kids with the animals. And so we, we talk about the animals' needs versus people's needs and healing. And, and uh, we also have volunteers that come in and they have uh, some tough backgrounds, some trauma in their lives. And the animals are just very healing for them to be able to work with them and take care of them. This is Pepper. This is his place, huh? And he knows it too. He's very bold, but he was the one that was uh, came from the animal therapy situation. And he is a mini lop, and you can tell by the, the way the ears are flat. And he, of course, you could probably guess why he is named Pepper, because he's black and white, huh? This is Cookie, and he came to us just a little while ago with uh, in March. And he, he was an Easter bunny that was neglected and was left out in the rain and only had iceberg lettuce. And then a nice couple rescued him and cared for him. And when they could no longer care for him, we adopted him. And he has gone, he's a, he's a superstar already. He's gone to a preschool to do work with them already and plans to do more of that um, with kids. And Violet is a lion's head and she likes to groom her hair. And Violet had two litters before she was six months which is really young, and she was rescued by Stacia, who also was the guardian of Pepper. And um, so when we adopted Pepper, we adopted Violet with him. We always base uh, the animals on our capacity, so we don't intentionally go out and seek animals. They kind of find us, um, and each one, because of our capacity, we want to make sure that the animals are cared for properly, and um, that the whole point is really to give them a permanent home and that they can heal because most of them come from abusive or neglect situations. And um, each one has to have some sort of backstory so we can use it as, for educational purposes. And that's how we seek them out or they seek us out if there's a story that we can use for education and then that we have the capacity to be able to care for them. So Puff and Powder are New Zealand whites and they're the typical bunnies or rabbits that are used for lab testing and meat production and we got we rescued these from a breeder who's actually going out of business which we were glad for um, so they've been with us actually three years they are sisters we rescued them as a to teach about the issues of lab testing especially because what happens is with bunnies like this they put them in little boxes and their heads stick out and then they spray chemicals into their eyes to test them and um, obviously it can blind them and it can harm them and it's a very cruel practice and we'd like to teach people about you know how wonderful they are and they don't need to be tested there's plenty of other opportunities to learn about chemical safety without harming an animal. I think one of the things that got us motivated to do this is that we found that the animals were healing for us and Tiffany came from uh, an abusive background as a child and throughout her whole life she's cared for animals and really bonded with them and it was very healing for her. For me, um, I had an illness and um, I started to go spend more time with the animals and I felt like they were, they were kind of my saving grace. Um, and um, so we felt like because they were that way for us, we wanted that for others. And I'll give you an example, I won't name names, but a volunteer comes regularly and she just is amazing with the animals. They, some of the animals will be like magnets to some people and some not. Every single animal here is a magnet to her. She's just that good with them. And she also came from a situation um, where she experienced some child abuse. And she's in a good situation now, but still needs some healing. And she comes and she just is so happy when she's here. It really is healing for her. And the animals love her so much and she's great with them. So it's a kind of a mutual opportunity. We try to do as much possible to foster what's natural for the animals. Um, we can't always do that because they're, some of them are in an unnatural setting, but like these guys. But um, we want their best behavior to come out and what we do is we give them a safe environment so they can be themselves. And you'd be amazed because there's a lot of myths about animals, especially like farm animals, that they're dumb or stupid or they don't know anything. Or, but when you give them the opportunity to be themselves, their personalities or animalities come out and you can see a side to animals that you've never seen before. Uh, if you visit a farm, you might not have that same experience.
This is the one I was talking about. She lost a hair. But she's super, super social and friendly. And she is a commercial bred turkey rescued so that she wouldn't be someone's Thanksgiving dinner. She's our watch turkey. And I'll say she loves affection. She'll sit here all afternoon and, and take this if she could. If we had all the time in the world, we would do that, huh? So this is Michael, and she is a bronze turkey, also raised for meat. And you can really tell the difference with her, how large her chest is compared to a wild turkey, because she looks very much like a wild turkey in terms of her coloring. And um, they breed them so that they keep eating so that their breasts become bigger. And if you, they get too much food, they have trouble walking. And she does have a little bit of trouble. We try to control what she eats. Um, but she definitely can't do what a wild turkey could, which would be to fly up in a tree and get out of danger to roost, and she's not able to do that. Um, and it's because she's bred the way she's bred. But she's an uh, extremely beautiful bird. She's currently, she just started laying eggs this spring, and uh, so she's uh, very protective of her eggs right now. Since we're just starting in October, and with the winter, we haven't had many visitors, but we do have um, set times during the warmer weather where, where people will be coming through. And since we started, we've had probably at least 50 people come through that are interested in meeting the animals and volunteering. Um, and some have become more steady than others. But in terms of visitation, what we have planned is that um, there'll be evening hours and also weekend hours during warm weather from April to October. And that's pretty standard for a sanctuary because it is a sanctuary and the animals live here. We want to give them their time to, to live without the pressure of people. Um, and then the visited, visiting hours are for people to experience the animals either by visiting or by caring for them. We have some arrangements with school systems and with um, I'm trying to set up, develop also opportunities with seniors and kids that are in foster care so they have the opportunity to come visit and care for the animals as well. What do you think? Were you, you were a rock star. Were you bouncing and making lots of noise? Huh? You ready to go up? Step up? No, I want to stay with my Cindy. Huh. Step up. Good boy.